Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal and our weekly segment with Joanna Jubilis of the Belmont Citizen Herald, which you can find online at belmont.wickedlocal.com. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So, Joanna, a number of items in the news this week. Uh, and first, I'll just mention there was an accident involving art specialties. Can you tell us what happened? I sure can. So during the February 1st monster snowstorm, there was an accident which damaged the front store window of Art Specialties, which is located at 369 Trapello Road. It was a black SUV operated by an unlicensed driver. And it she was uh, turning left on Trapello Road and seemed to have lost control of the vehicle and went right into Art Specialties window. And a Belmont police officer happened to be on duty at the time and witnessed the entire accident. Um, the operator was transported to the hospital just for evaluation. She, she said she was fine, but they just wanted to have her evaluated. She was charged with unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle as well as marked lanes violation. Um, they had Office of Community Development look at the building to make sure it was still safe to occupy. There, there actually was an employee in the store at the time of the accident. He was okay. And the store is able to operate. It is able to open, be remain open. They boarded up the window and the Community Development Office said it's safe to occupy. So for the time being, they are, they are open, which is good because nobody wants to lose business, especially during these times. So they are still open. And luckily, everyone is safe. Well, that's good. So I understand, um, Joanna, that the, the Belmont Health Department is getting some COVID vaccine. What's the story there? That's very good news for senior citizens 75 and, and up in Belmont, because as you may have heard, there's been a lot of trouble for senior citizens to sign up for the vaccines that are being offered by the state. They're really struggling. They need help. Then when they get on, they... they can't get the appointment. It's, it's been a, a really difficult process. So the good news is that Belmont's health department is collaborating with Arlington and Lexington. It's a regional effort and they can get a hundred doses of the Moderna vaccine every week in February. And they are calling residents of Belmont who have signed up. You can sign up through the website if you are interested in hearing about vaccines being offered in Belmont. So make sure you go on the Belmont Health Department website. If you don't wanna go on the website and sign up, you can call, they'll take your information. If you haven't received a call yet, you will. They are calling residents as these vaccines become available in Belmont. They usually find out like Monday or Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, if you get the call and you get scheduled, the clinics are on Wednesdays at Arlington High School. So, Joanna, I also understand there's an apparent issue with the replacement of the fuel tanks, and I believe these are at the DPW yard. What, what is the issue there? Yes. The, Bel the Department of Public Works in Belmont has underground fuel tanks for gas and diesel, and since 2017, these fuel tanks have needed to be replaced. They are no longer approved by the Department of Environmental Protection, and they are no longer insurable. So that's why this past town meeting in June, uh, it was approved a capital project to replace the tanks. $540,000 was approved at town meeting to replace the tanks. And the project that was approved is for these above ground fuel tanks for 6,000 gallons for gas, 6,000 gallons for diesel. And at the February 1st select board meeting, they were going to approve the license for these tanks to get the project started. But what happened is, Abutters in the neighborhood of the DPW yard are not happy about this. They want the fuel tanks to either be located somewhere else or they want new underground fuel tanks to be installed because number one, they don't like how the above ground tanks look. They're concerned about how they look. Number two, they're concerned about the safety of having these fuel tanks in their neighborhood. And they had a whole other list of concerns and all of these concerns were addressed at the February 1st select board meeting. They have an expert consultant that they hired who addressed every single concern. And they even looked at possibly relocating the fuel tanks to what is known as the incinerator site in Belmont. 
and it is an option. However, there's uh, the, the two big reasons why it, it can't be considered is time. It would take way too much time to get it approved by the state. Number two, the likelihood that the Conservation Commission would even approve fuel storage in, on that site is, is pretty unlikely according to Glenn Clancy, our Director of Community Development. So the project right now is, is, is going to be voted on February 8th. I, I know they, they tried to stop it. I don't know if anything will happen between now and February 8th to continue to try to stop it. But uh, for the time being, it looks like they will continue to discuss it on February 8th and most likely they will take a vote because the insurance tanks need, they need, I'm sorry, they need insurance for liability for these tanks and they can't get it in the, with the current tanks they have. So another issue that came up uh, before the uh, February 1st select board was whether uh, Belmont should continue to celebrate Columbus Day or whether the holiday should be redesignated as Indigenous Peoples Day. What, uh, what, what's the story there, Joanna? Sure. The Bel Belmont High School Student Activist Club presented this, what they're calling a resolution to be brought before town meeting in May to change Columbus Day in Belmont to Indigenous Peoples Day. And the reason for that is Columbus it, um, was responsible for committing genocide and causing the beginning of transatlantic slave trade along the Col Colombian exchange. And they went through a whole list of all the um, things that Columbus did that is why they believe he shouldn't be celebrated and why in this current time, in this day and age, you know, we wanna be a welcoming community for all and why changing it to Indigenous Peoples Day is a better option because why are you celebrating a man who did so many bad things? And, and you know- so, so what did the select board decide? They decided that it would be brought before town meeting. And then, you know, at town meeting, I'm sure it'll be debated. There were a lot of people at the February 1st select board meeting who wanted to pu publicly comment on it. And at first, uh, Chairman Roy Epstein told them that he was not going to take public comments. There wasn't a lot of time and they had to move the agenda along, but uh, a lot of people are very upset about that. So then he allowed them to speak two minutes at a time each. And the message clearly was, we, we wanna do this and we have the right to do this. And, and how dare you, you know, not allow us to speak about it. And, you know, it did get a bit heated between Chairman Roy Epstein and, and some of the public that were there. And um, it was decided it will go to town meeting for further, for further discussion and a vote. And by the way, they also, um, the high school students also got a 500, uh, 550 people to sign a petition for this. So there's definitely a lot of support. And um, I think it's, it's nice to see that students young residents of Belmont are getting involved in something like this because they are the future. So, so Joanna, where I think uh, we'll, we'll end this segment with some happier news. I understand a local missing girl has been found. That's right. I can't say her name because it's currently uh, now being investigated, but there was a missing girl in Belmont. She, she actually ran away on January 17th and it was getting, uh, you know, pretty scary. People were worried, very worried about her. And the FBI actually got involved. And um, her parents were even on the news saying, you know, please, you know, anyone have information on our daughter. Um, she is living with her father in Belmont and her mother is from Illinois. And that's where she moved from. She recently moved to Belmont from Illinois. She was a track star at, at Belmont High. And um, she was found, so, so the FBI got involved on the 27th of January and she was found on the 28th at a hotel in Dedham. I think it was the Holiday Inn. And um, she, you know, she was taken to the hospital to be evaluated, but I believe she's, she's now home safe. This is under investigation. Um, worth noting is that she, you know, she did leave two notes behind that possibly helped locate her um, one was, you know, a letter, you know, to her parents saying that she was running away. And the other one was actually written in someone else's handwriting. And it was like, how to run away untraceable and like a checklist of all the things you need to do. So it's, um, it's a time when parents, you know, we give our kids a lot of freedom, but we really, you just never know what's, what's going on when they're on their little mobile devices or on their computers. And 
um, it's a, it can be a scary time with technology these days and, and we're glad she's safe. I, I would say the whole community, community is very glad that she is now safe. All right, so we certainly are glad that she's been found. Um, and thank you so much, Joanna, for the updates. And we will talk with you next time. You're welcome.